Hi, everybody. Um, this is, again, Oscar Hernandez with Houston in Action. Um, uh, today, we're going to be talking about Houston uh, or H-Town votes and our call for artists and cultural workers. And uh, we're going to go over the, uh, the process of how to apply um, and how, uh, and we're, we're going to have a portion for Q&A towards the end, but we'll get to there in a second. Now, um, the first thing we like to do um, uh, for right now is uh, maybe have a small place for introductions. Um, we would love to hear your name, uh, pronouns, and our check-in question for today is, where are you Zooming uh, in from? Um, and what artistic or cultural practice do you have? Um, if you can uh, use the chat portion to fill out the discussion there, um, I can start us off here. Um, I'll y'all fill it out, and then Andrea can introduce herself as well. So. Uh, my name is Oscar Hernandez. My pronouns are he, him, and el. Um, I'm from Houston, from H-Town. Excited to be here. Um, and I, I, my, thing <coughs> my artistic practice, I would say, is talking. <laughs> I enjoy it a lot. Um, and um, through organizing, I, I practice it a lot. But I also like to do visual paintings and other stuff. But I prefer to talk most of the time. <laughs> um, Andrea, would you like to introduce yourself? Sure. Hi, everyone. I'm Andrea Asaf, or Andrea también, si hablas español. And I, I go by um, she, ella, or they pronouns, if you're comfortable using they. I am Zooming in today from Tampa, Florida, uh, which is Seminole land. And my artistic practice includes um, theater, poetry and spoken word, and interdisciplinary performance and cultural organizing. And you'll be hearing a lot more from me in a little bit. So you can um, also put your information in the chat if you'd like to check in that way. Thank you, Andrea. Thank you. Yeah, everybody, uh, if you could please use the chat portion so we can fill out and continue the discussion. Thank you so much, Christine and Miguel. Um, so feel free to use there as you would love for y'all to connect to and hopefully build the relationship in and out of this whole experience. Um, moving into the next portion, um, Andrea, if you want to go over the agenda for today. Sure. So we're going to have an introduction to Houston in Action for those of you that aren't familiar. Um, Oscar is going to tell us about the organization and the H-Town Votes Initiative. Um, and then I'll be talking about um, Art to Action, which is partnering with Houston in Action on this project and give a little framing around uh, what is cultural organizing? What do we mean by that? Um, we'll talk about partnerships because artists and organizers working together is extremely important for this project. And then we'll walk you through an application overview of how to apply and some of the questions that are coming up most frequently um, around the application. We'll talk about then the selection process and timeline, and if your project is select selected, what happens next. And then we'll open it up for Q&A because I'm sure all of you, uh, if you've spent some time with the guidelines or the proposal, you might already have questions. Um, so we'll try to give you lots of information and then have a good conversation afterward. Thank you so much, Andrea. And for those who are just joining, feel free to use the chat portion to introduce yourself into the space. Um, so that way everybody knows who's here and uh, make relationships, make some friends. Um, so I would like to first introduce uh, Houston in Action for those of you who are new to the space or better yet, who Houston in Action might be new to you um, and what we are uh, and what we're trying to do with our H-Town uh, votes. Uh, the first thing I would like to cover is uh, maybe introduce everyone in this space into our working principles. Now, our working principles are typically what we use when we, um, uh, a way of grounding ourselves within our work. Um, and it's also working principles that we like to do before every training, every meeting, in order to remember how we built it together. This was developed by our membership um, uh, of over 50 different organizations, but I'll talk about them in a bit. Uh, one of the working principles uh, I'm going to be using for today is equities and systems level change, which is actively working to rebalance civil, civic power by changing systems that affect civic participation amongst communities who have been historically marginalized because of racism, sexism, and other forms of discrimination. Mm. I also would like to lift up today engagement okay. with community. Um, engaging in ongoing dialogue with the communities that the initiative serves in order to inform continuous improvement and accountability. So both of those principles, along with all the others, but especially equity and systems and engagement with community are key to this project. So we want to look those up. 
Yes, and we typically also, for most of our uh, trainings and meetings, we have uh, community agreements. But uh, because we're doing a lot of Zoom, I would just uh, take this time to say that uh, for this call, we want to make sure that we listen to everybody. So uh, we'll make sure to give a couple of seconds between people so people have time to answer and unmute themselves. But I'm also asking that if um, you're not speaking, uh, if you could please mute yourself. Um, I'm going to do my best to not mute you intentionally, but um, if you can mute yourself this way, we can, we don't have any uh, noise coming in back and forth. At the same time, um, we will have a portion at the end for Q&A, but if you do have a burning question, feel free to write it down in the chat portion and we'll keep track of it so um, we can ask it towards the end and you don't forget. Um, now, when I say Houston in Action, what do I mean? So Houston in Action, we are uh, an organization um, that we organize uh, lots of the different uh, nonprofit organizations. We have over 50 plus members, as you can see in this list, so just a few names. Um, thank, uh, the, through, through our work and our membership, we've actually been able to uh, organize and fund uh, 13 different uh, nonprofit organizations with organizers, so they can do community organizing, co organizing uh, and be a direct, directly uh, working with the community who's impacted. Um, through our work, uh, as we build uh, power and shift, um, uh, we're basically as strong as our membership. So everything that we do is about uh, collaborating and working together. Um, we, we have a collective impact model, which essentially means that we're only as good as the collective body in which we participate in, and we, uh, we wouldn't be interested in action without members. Um, we've been working in the process for over three years, and the big a um, uh, portion of what we want to do is to make sure that um, our, our, our under con, our undercounted communities, as we've done work around census and um, our uh, disenfranchised communities as we're moving into voter engagement, uh, have or have ways to participate uh, for a full civic life. Um, so what we want to ensure uh, that, that we do as we move forward is that the people who are impacted the most are also have a voice in this space. In the organizing world, we use the phrase, nothing about us without us. And that's really how I think we envision this space as moving forward and working together. And I'd be more than happy to elaborate more of the work that we're doing. Um, I would say two things, uh, though, is that uh, uh, as I started working with Houston in Action, one of our biggest campaigns was to make sure that people um, get counted in the census. And remember, you can still get counted. You still have time until um, the end of September. Uh, and now we're shifting into voter engagement, which, uh, which brings us all here today. Um, so H-Town Votes, it's actually like a big project that uh, we were very, very excited about. Um, this is actually a, 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 an ongoing and growing pro uh, program that we've been trying to build since last year. Um, most of our work has been uh, working and focusing around census, and we wanted to do an art project um, with census. Um, but as um, as we moved forward and we were building, it was a slow moving progress and we, we, we had it, we were there. Um, because we were working with uh, the people that we know are the, uh, the people who are affected and who we want their voices represented. And these are folks who usually don't get represented. Um, so as the people that we're always looking for when we're talking about artists is uh, uh, projects for those who have been historically underrepresented and, and unsupported through voting groups, um, specifically with the Black, Latinx, Asian communities, our indigenous people um, and communities of color. Um, and we want to make sure that we have uh, an opportunity, like I said, through collective impact, which is to build power together. And through this process for H-Town Votes, we really want to, to emphasize that, that relationship building is an important process of all the work that we do, which means that uh, artists working with organizers and some of the nonprofits that we're working with in collaboration to push this forward. Um, but because COVID happened um, early this year, it actually shifted our work a lot. So we ended up pausing the arts program and the culture organizing that we had to as everyone was forced to slow down. And we do want to acknowledge that uh, that COVID has uh, impacted everyone's work. And we know that especially within the arts world, it's, had, it's hit it hard. So um, we want to think creatively and maybe hear from your ideas of how do we uh, work through this uh, pandemic um, how do we encourage people and empower people to vote? Um, well, at the same time, making sure that we're safe and healthy and that um, we're not breaking any, um, any, uh, any, any, or not, better yet, that we're not uh, risking our, our health. Um, now, the intention for uh, the projects that we have, we're hoping to, uh, to grant at least four $10,000 uh, grants is to uh, help us in our voter engagement work. 
Now, through our currently our voter engagement work, what it looks like at the moment is that you might see well, I'm one of the, the many nonprofit organizations that we work with do uh, Zoom trainings, uh, Facebook outreach, um, any kind of anything on social media that has to do with uh, elections and supporting people so they know how to register to vote. Um, at the same time, we are doing text banking. We're all making phone calls. Uh, we're making sure that people know that they have um, that they understand the the rights and what the process looks like for them to register to vote. So um, the, our goal in Houston has been to uh, get at least a, uh, to get 100,000 people. It's a huge number, but Houston is a massive city. So uh, we want to be able to impact that. And your role as an artist within the space is to help us meet that goal. So I know it's ambitious, but I also know that we can do it. So um, now I'm gonna tell you a little bit about Arts Action and how we're partnering with Houston Action on this initiative. Um, first of all, Arts Action is a, a nonprofit organization um, based in Tampa, Florida. We are, you'll see our mission here on the screen to create, develop, produce, and present original theater, interdisciplinary performance, performative acts, and progressive cultural organizing. We explicitly support women artists, uh, BIPOC or artists of color, queer and trans identified artists and creative allies. Um, we are dedicated to cultural equity and innovation, artistic quality and community value and making an impact with our work. Um, you can visit arttoaction.org to learn a lot more about art to action But what are we doing here in this project in Houston uh, with Houston in Action? Well, we've partnered in a couple of ways. One of the things that we've been doing and will continue to be doing is offer trainings on cultural organizing, racial justice, and healing justice. Um, we collaborated on the design and development of the H-Town Votes um, call for proposals for artists and cultural workers, and we'll be guiding the process with the cohort of selected artists. Um, and that'll include um, peer learning uh, meetings, exchanges, um, consulting and or offering support or answering questions as needed, and really being a kind of um, guide and support uh, uh, to the process as you are implementing the projects with your partners. So what is cultural organizing? I've used that term a few times and there are different definitions, um, but we borrow largely from the arts and democracy project definition, um, which I'll read out to you. Cultural organizing exists at the intersection of arts, culture, and activism. It's a fluid and dynamic practice. There's no one answer or one size fits all. And it's understood and expressed in a variety of ways that reflect unique cultural, artistic, and organizational and community contexts of its practitioners. Cultural organizing is about integrating arts and culture into organizing strategy. I'm gonna say that again, because that's really important. Integrating arts and culture work into organizing strategy. It's also about organizing from a particular tradition, cultural identity, community, or sense of place or worldview to advance social and economic justice. You can learn a lot more about cultural organizing at artsanddemocracy.org or other great organizations like the Highlander Center. So when it comes to uh, how we're working together and when, when we, even when I talk about a collective impact. So uh, once again, I, it's important to really emphasize why it's so uh, uh, valuable to be in collaboration because it's not intended to have projects that disseminate or that uh, go in separate ways. Um, what we would like to do or ideally would be a great move is to, um, as you're thinking of an art project or how, what you work with, uh, we would love to connect you with some of the nonprofits that we work with. Um, we have organizations um, uh, from Latinx community, um, including like Mi Familia Bota, Baker Ripley, United We Dream, Top, and organizations who work in the Black community like Hall, TFN, um, we're in collaboration with H Town Power and, and uh, Pure Justice. Um, we want to continue building even our strengths within the Asian community, working with OCA, M Gage, and um, uh, BPSOS, just to name a few. And we really want to be able to connect with the community and be able to express this project 
projects with the organizations that the folks work with. Even within our membership, um, we have a variety of different nonprofit organizations from the more structured uh, um, big organizations to small organizations. Um, then, and even the organizations who are very nonprofit structured to some who are more radical in protests. And what we want to be able to do is to be able to match your artistic abilities and process with the organizations that are out there and, and working with you, with the community. Um, so we also understand that, um, that this might be tricky, right? This might not be um, what always, um, uh, the ideal situation because uh, we are moving to a lot to virtually. So some of the uh, artist skills have to shift and we have to think about different ways in which we want to move forward. So uh, if you're not in Houston, but you want to do uh, participate with this and send in a proposal, you still can we want to make sure that we can connect you with the organizations and the work that we're moving forward here. Um, and I would say also that Houston action, we have always been data driven. Um, and by that, I mean that even when it comes to census and voter engagement, like we want to be able to show how we connected to those uh, 100,000 uh, voters that we're able to mobilize. Um, and we can do that. We have systems in place and that it helps us connect to the community. We have systems in place that can keep track of the work and to show the impact that we're doing. Um, we've learned a lot from working in through census and building those relationships. And we want to continue that growth as we're moving forward and being able to demonstrate your work. Uh, one big factor to take in place also is that all projects have to be nonpartisan as we are a nonpartisan organization uh, and follow the 501c3 guidelines. Um, uh, and we'll make sure to send um, the election checklist for the 501c3 so as you understand what it looks like. Um, but basically, if this 501c3 is a new word for you, it does basically mean what a nonprofit organization looks like, because um, we are a nonprofit organizations and the vast majority of all our members are nonprofit organizations and also are nonpartisan. And because we're nonprofit, we uh, we're only work nonpartisan. That's also a big value of how we move forward as an organization. Um, Oscar, I'd like to add here, um, just to lift up what you're saying. So for artists, um, this means that the, the goal is really civic engagement and civic participation. Um, and we cannot directly advocate for any particular uh, candidate or issue um, for or against. It's really about how do we get more people to participate in the civic process and make sure that our communities are not undercounted. Another thing I wanna lift up that, um, that Oscar was saying is about partnerships. A lot of people have already been asking me uh, questions about partnerships. So unlike a lot of other grants that are out there in the arts world where they ask you to talk about um, who your partners are gonna be, instead in this case, um, Houston Action has this incredible array of partnerships already working together on civic engagement and voter engagement. So you don't have to go find a new partner. You have to be willing and excited to work with the partners that Houston Action is already working with. And once we uh, read your application, we'll help, that'll help us figure out what might be a good match. Andrea and Oscar, could that also mean that you can come uh, your proposal can come with the option of some of these uh, names that you've already mentioned. I've already been in conversation with, uh, I think, two names that you mentioned that are partners of yours. So could that be part of your proposal? Yeah, so there will be a part of the application if you, um, when you look through it, that will ask you about your relationships with the communities that you're choosing to work work with. And you can definitely articulate that you've already begun relationship building with, um, with a partner in Houston if you already have one, absolutely. Thank you. Thank you so much, thank you for that question. And for everyone else here too, if you have any questions, like feel free to, um, to ask, but are we also suggesting to use the chat portion so we can also um, record what the questions are and we can make sure to follow up with you. Um, let me just address a question that is in the chat. Um, in the slides before, it was showing you some examples of the partnerships that already are working with Houston in action. So not that you need to have existing Houston connections, but that you may be paired with um, partners among the organizations that Houston Action is already working with. Thank you, Amanda. Um, 
Oops. Okay, so how do you actually apply for this thing? Um, if um, there are certain, so here are first, I'm gonna give you the requirements for all applications. And then I'm gonna talk about what do we mean by an alternative application. So all applications will require um, online applicant details that must be filled out and submitted online. Narrative questions, which you'll have some options about how you wanna answer, I'll explain in a moment. A budget and work samples. And I'm gonna walk through each of those things in the next few slides. Not yet, please. Sorry. Yeah. Uh, one second. Okay. So um, what is an alternative application? Uh, we were I was really inspired by um, alternate routes and their work on how do we make applications more accessible um, to folks who might not be grant writers, but have a brilliant concept for a project that they're ready to implement. Um, so you have an, uh, options about how you wanna submit your narrative. If you are a writer and writing the narrative is the best way that you can articulate your vision, then absolutely you can write a narrative. And you can fill that out entirely on the online application if that works for you. But if you have challenges with internet or simply prefer to work offline, you can download the application, work offline, write the narrative offline and upload it later when you're going through the online application. Um, if writing is not how you communicate best um, and you'd like to submit an alternative, you still have to answer all the same narrative questions. You still have to answer all the same narrative questions that are in the narrative section, but you can answer them on video or with an audio file. So if you feel like you express yourself best orally and you can paint a picture for us, um, uh, answer and address all of the narrative questions, you could submit a video or audio file uh, or link instead of a written narrative. And um, if you visit the Houston Action Artist Guidelines page, um, everything is uh, written out in a lot of detail and hopefully will address all of your questions. But we'll try to address questions that you have today as well. You can go to the next slide. So there's a section of the online application and applicant details that I wanted to particularly um, lift up and talk about. Uh, and I'll read it to you. It says, we value first voice representation, aligning artists with communities that they are rooted in or represent. The following list are Houston communities that we hope to engage and mobilize with this project based on the demographics of our geographic area. Which community would you like to work with? And then you get to select one of these. Um, and then it asks you, uh, if you want, you can say more about how you identify or which uh, community you would like to work with in these kind of demographic focus areas. So for example, you might say, I really wanna work with youth and I particularly wanna work with LGBTQ youth. Or you might wanna say, I identify as an indigenous artist but I have a long relationship with the Latinx community and I wanna do a project that's about indigeneity and Latinx communities working together. Um, those are just some examples. I also wanna mention that by Asian American and Pacific Islander, we use a very expansive and inclusive understanding of that terminology. So for example, that includes um, Middle Eastern communities. Uh, it includes um, Hawaiian islands, it includes um, folks that maybe haven't always traditionally been, been included in Asian Americans. So we want you to know that um, whoever you are, however you identify, you're welcome to apply and you'll have opportunities throughout the application to tell us more about who you are, what you bring, what your history with communities uh, that you wanna work with is and how you might work together. Can go ahead, thanks. All right, so there's a section that asks about the project timeline, which is basically, what are you gonna do and when are you gonna do it? What are your key dates to achieve milestones or goals in your project? Um, and how do the key voting dates fit into that timeline? So like if you know that October 5th is the deadline for voter registration and one of your goals is to register X number of voters with your partner, remember artists, you don't have to do it 
all alone. You're, you're collaborating with organizers who are on the ground in Houston. Um, then you, you would want to put October 5th in your timeline. Um, so, for example, you know, uh, and we'll talk about uh, what happens if you get the grant, but September 4th, you'll need to return your contract at your project plan and attend a training and the, by the following week, be ready to start meeting your partners and finalizing collaboration agree agreements. Um, and because we have these deadlines around actual real voting deadlines like voter registration and the election itself, um, when you complete uh, first draft or final draft of whatever the artistic or um, cultural pieces that you're creating might be, that should be in the timeline as well. So we can kind of see the relationship about how you're creating work, uh, when you're rolling it out, and how it relates to the election deadlines. Budget. Um, you can use your own budget template if you prefer, but we've also provided one that you can download, fill out, and upload again into the application. Um, and what I want to emphasize here is that we want you to tell us, what does this project really cost? What is your vision? We want you to pay yourself as an artist. We want you to pay people uh, that you are working with, if whether they're other artists or perhaps um, you know, participants that are co-creating with you. We want folks to um, get paid for their work. And we also want the budget to cover the real costs of actually doing this. Um, so your expense categories are artist fees or artists or fees, I'll say it like that. Production, supplies and materials, um, administration time or anything that might cost regarding marketing or promotion. And again, remember, you'll have partners at Houston in Action and possibly other community partners who are helping to disseminate the project with you. Um, any travel, if that's required, and other, you can explain to us what is in your other category. Um, but uh, we want you to know that we want to understand what the real cross of the project is so that, um, that people are adequately supported to really do it and for it to be effective. Um, so when you get to income, you are not required to match this grant at all. If your whole project costs $10,000 and that's all you've got and that's what you do, that's great. Um, if you think it's a project that costs a lot more, uh, please tell us how you imagine you will support the other um, income that's needed. What are those other sources? They can be in-kind or cash. Um, perhaps uh, something you've already applied for that might be pending. Just make sure you explain it to us so we can see how your um, income and your expenses line up and match. And you can uh, explain your budget or how you did your calculations if you want. The budget explanation is optional. Um, work samples. And I see lots of questions in the chat, which we'll get to in a little bit. So we're gonna go through the presentation, see if we answer some of your questions and then we'll open it up and you'll get to ask them. Um, work samples, this is the question I get the most, the area I get the most questions about. Um, and as an artist, believe me, I understand. I understand that the word limits are hard, word and character limits drive me crazy, but we're trying to encourage you to keep it short. We don't want you to put so much work into this proposal that, um, you know, we, we, we want you to tell us what's your vision, how you're going to get there, who do you imagine working with, what's it going to cost, and then give us some samples of, of your work. So uh, you are required to submit at least one work sample and ideally something that's reflective of your proposed project or if you've never done a project like this before, something that tells us about your process or aesthetic or the way you work. Um, a maximum of up to three work samples, totaling no more than five minutes or five pages if you're submitting, um, five minutes if you're submitting audio or video, five pages if you're submitting a PDF. Um, now, what does that mean if you're an interdisciplinary artist or if you're proposing a collaboration among artists? Yes, you can mix and match samples, but you are 
um, we're asking you to give us no more than three samples. So perhaps you give us um, some images from a visual artist you're working with um, and also a sound file uh, from the musician that you're working with uh, and also a video clip, that's three samples. So um, you can mix and match forms and uh, disciplines, but please limit your work samples to three, maximum five pages or maximum five minutes of watching or listening time. And again, for detailed per discipline uh, guidelines, you can go to the artist guidelines page. Thank you, Andrea. And, um, and I know there's a lot of questions even about this and about selecting like the process and how we uh, decide who are the artists who are going to be going through the um, through be granted these awards. And once again, these are um, uh, for the idea is to fund four projects for um, ten thousand dollars. That's that's our big goal in order to support um, all these different projects to make the impact we have. The deadline to apply uh, is Sunday, August 23rd at 11.59 p.m. Central, this is central time, so please make sure to make a note of that. Um, after you have applied, um, our, we, will have, we do have a review panel um, in order to, uh, to move it forward. And for, uh, for the, this review panel is developed of different um, uh, people from different backgrounds uh, who are part of staff and uh, members of HIA as well as staff and members of Art to Action and our partners. Uh, the projects will, uh, will be uh, awarded and announced on September 1st and uh, with the, the, the perspective of uh, to be uh, to start the project around September 8th. Um, and the reason also we are moving in this direction um, because I know it, it took us um, some time to build the process and to make sure it was successful and available to everybody. Um, uh, one of the guidelines that we, we try to follow through is about equity. So um, it took so, a while to make sure that this is as equitable, equitable as possible, that we give both a big, uh, uh, people who have a big, a lot of experience in this, um, as well as those who might have so, a lot less experience to be able to participate. Um, but because this is around a uh, voter, um, uh, around the elections and um, for age town votes, um, the way we're moving forward currently from now to October 5th, um, we are supporting people to make sure that they have everything they need so they can register to vote. October 5th is the last day to register to vote. Um, after October 5th, it's where full mobilization to mobilize people um, to get to go to the polls by November 3rd. So the intention is, um, as you see how this is moving, that um, if this is maybe like, these are dates that we really want you to keep keep in mind about how, what this looks like and how we're developing um, uh, this pro this entire project. Um, we also uh, want to acknowledge that as you see the work and, uh, and the projects that you want to develop, uh, the question that always comes to mind is like, come November 3rd, like how do you want to feel? you know, uh, about the, the work and the impact that you made within the community. You know, um, were you able to inspire people and build something into the space where they came, came in and mobilized to help us meet that goal of uh, ensuring that over, um, you know, 100,000 people were able to register to vote and were able to go uh, to the polls and make that impact that they see and they want in their community by voting. Um, and through your art, um, it's gonna be a, a huge impact that you were able to cause um, just by participating and developing and connecting to the community. So, yeah, so I see in the chat that Sybil said this is a very fast turnaround. Yes, it is. It is a very fast turnaround because the elections are around the corner. This is a very goal oriented, impact oriented project. So what happens if your project is actually selected? You have to be ready. If you put in this proposal, it means you're ready to begin as soon as possible. Um, so it'll be a quick turnaround. We'll announce on September 1st, that's our goal. And then we'll send out contracts and a template for project plans right away. Um, and we'll need you to turn around that paperwork as soon as you can, because the sooner you get the paperwork in, the sooner you can get the first payment from the grant. Um, we would like you all to hold on your calendar now 
uh, the first training that we'll be offering, which is a racial justice training that um, talks about a, uh, a, a large national framework and then also connects it to Houston specifically. And that'll be on September 4th, which is a Friday, I believe, at four o'clock central, five o'clock Eastern. And projects begin September 8th, as soon as you are ready to begin. And beginning might mean meeting with your partners and having a conversation about uh, how you're gonna work together and how you're gonna implement the project together. If you have turned around your uh, paperwork right away, um, by September 4th, we'll try to get the first payment out to you, which will be three quarters of the grant or $7,500 by September 15th. And um, we'll, throughout the course of your project, we'll ask you to participate in three to four online Houston Action Academy trainings and or learning exchanges with Art to Action, which can include voter engagement, cultural organizing framework and values, art and digital organizing, tools and practices, and evaluation. How are you gonna evaluate your project? How do you plan for that in advance? Um, and so these trainings are really meant uh, to support you and support the process and answer questions and give you tools and look at some best practices together so the cohort of funded artists um, can really be a learning community uh, together through this process. So it's a big commitment. It's a short timeline. It's a lot of focus from now till the election. Um, we'll ask for evaluation and reports and wrap up by December 15th. And again, if you get all your paperwork in uh, by then or sooner, then the final payment will be delivered before the end of December, before the end of the calendar year. All right, I think we're ready for Q&A. Oscar, you're muted. Yes, I realize that. We have a good number of questions actually coming yeah, in. Um, so I, I wrote it down. I, I know that there was a first question is, uh, is any of the data you use for Organized Houston published? Uh, can we have access to it uh, to draft out proposals? So um, a lot of the, the information, everything that we have is intended to be um, public. Uh, we're still in the process of collecting a lot of data from our systems and it will be public. I'm not sure that it will be public necessarily in time for um, uh, uh, the, this proposal, but um, if you go to our website, you will be able to see uh, like the different areas and where all, all our events are happening and uh, the different areas where the organizations we work in. And that, that could give you an idea of like where, where we're participating and where our membership is. Um, also, part of why we're asking you questions about who you are, how you identify, who you like to work with, what your history working with that community is, is so that we can help um, build relationships and introduce you to partners. And also uh, on the on the back end within Houston in Action, they'll be checking with partners to see who wants to work with artists. So you will have support in, in making those connections. Yes, and there's also, uh, I think, some confusion where someone was asking um, uh, if if that, that, that uh, maybe they understood that they needed to have like existing uh, connections with Houston. Um, that's not, uh, that. I guess like we said before, that really depends on the project because we do work with a lot of people in Houston and we can help support and make those connections. A lot of that's gonna depend on your proposal. So um, some of the questions I saw in the chat really are up to you. Like for example, should I pay youth participants or not? Or um, uh, uh, where is the artwork going to be seen? Those are entirely up to your design. We don't want to, um, we want to give the artists and cultural workers a lot of space to tell us how you envision this working and what your values are and how you like to work with community. So, um, for example, some projects might, uh, because of the way they're working with youth, want to uh, offer a youth stipend or um, someone previously asked us about uh, a, a youth competition. Um, you might want to build in uh, honoraria or prize money into your uh, budget if that's what is central to your proposal. And also, um, if you decide that you want to work with youth, but you're not planning to pay youth because you're planning to pay artists or um, have certain costs associated with the project, please just explain that to us in your budget and your budget narrative, your budget explanation. 
um, where is the artwork going to be showcased? Again, entirely up to you and your partners. Some of you might choose to do digital projects. Someone else might do a mural or a billboard project. Um, all that we ask is whatever you envision, you envision it at, with um, the pandemic in mind. We are committed to keeping people safe and we want you to stay safe. And um, so we are asking everyone to kind of think outside of the box and think in this um, how, virtual world, even if you make work in live space or real time, um, how can it be disseminated and shared and seen widely in the safest way possible? Thank you, Andrea. Um, and to that, um, there's two other questions. One's uh, about, well, we have a few other questions on the list and I also wanted to open up to everybody else. Uh, but to the question about um, uh, checking out the organizations that we work with, again, you can go to our website and you can see all the different organization nonprofits that, we, uh, that we're partnering with in, in our membership, um, as well as if this is gonna be access, access, accessible after this. Uh, yes, um, for those who couldn't join in the call today, uh, this will be recorded. Our intention is to hopefully have this uh, recorded and put on our YouTube channel and it will be shared or emailed to y'all so y'all can have access to that. Now, there were other... Um, yeah, I'll address one more question. So Kevin is asking um, if we, if we can you write a proposal that reflects anticipated partners through Art to Action? I'm not sure exactly what you mean, Kevin, but I do want to clarify that Art to Action is not a partner on the projects that you're proposing. Art to Action's role in this process is to support the learning community and the overall process of the grant initiative uh, as, as a, a trainer and consultant and guide and support. Um, so we're not actually doing any of the art ourselves on this project. We're supporting the art that you wanna make. Thank you, Andrea. Um, and I think we answered the question about uh, how many grants are available in the quantity, but there is another question was, is it possible to, to provide artists, websites, sites, Facebook page numbers, et cetera? Um, I'm not sure, as Azeb, if you want to elaborate more on the, what you meant by that question, and feel free to unmute yourself at this point. We'd love to see you too, if you feel like uh, turning on your video. I believe my video is on. You yes. I'm here. Um, I work uh, with the brilliant artist from um, Iraq, actually. Um, he does a really amazing photos about um, life of refugees. And I came to this country as a refugee and I work with diverse community, uh, people who came from all over the world. So we want to display and showcase in a way that um, we know of and how we can tell the stories um, without saying a word. I believe he is one of the artists who can deliver that work and I've been working with him diligently. For that reason, the question I was asking, um, he's not a writer, he's an artist. To put the proposal, I would definitely help him with that. In the meantime, uh, like you said, he can provide information, artist work. He, he's known, well known internationally and he does have newsletters, he has Facebook and he also has his own website that we can submit. If you still need the narrative, we can still do that as well. That was the question I was specifically asking. Thank you. Yes, yes. In the work sample section, um, you can put a link to a website if that's the, the best way to share the samples of the artist's work. Um, that's fine. You still need to answer the narrative questions. It's fine if you do it collaboratively or help him. And as we said, it could be written or it could be a video. And the videos um, for the narrative, I'm actually really glad that you asked. If you do video audio for your narrative, it doesn't have to be fancy or produced. It, we really just want you to answer the questions in the way that is uh, most comfortable for you to fully express yourself. Um, Thank, question. You. Thank you so much, Zep, for the question. Uh, we have another one. Is, is, is it up to us to decide the partners or how many community partners can we have? Um, Again, that's, uh, a lot of that depends on the project. Um, to be honest with you, um, we want you to collaborate with HIA partners um, uh, and we work with um, the vast majority of the nonprofits here in Houston. So I'm pretty sure if you have someone in mind, we probably already have some kind of relationship, whether they're partners um, that work with us or are HIA members. 
You don't necessarily have to decide who your partner is going to be in advance. In the application, you're going to tell us what community you would like to focus on uh, working with. And then uh, remember, partnership is a consensual two-way process. So we will also be asking the partners uh, who they're interested in working with. And it'll, it'll be um, a collaboration that goes both ways. So if you don't already have a partner in mind, you can still apply with your, your concept and your vision and we'll help um, find the right partners who want to work with you. Um, feel free to unmute yourself if you want to ask a question, if you have any concerns or thoughts, we'll be more than happy to, to support. <laughs> uh, I think we have Armando, go ahead, go first. Sorry. We, um, we jumped on this right away and we actually found a set of partners from everything from a graphic designer, to visual artist, musician, dancer. So, I mean, if there's anybody on the call that would be interested in working with Mecca, we'd be glad to um, have you join our conversations. Uh, we're meeting again tomorrow via Zoom. Do you want to, Armando, tell people what Mecca is in case they don't already know? Uh, Mecca stands for Multicultural Education and Counseling Through the Arts. It's over 40 year old arts organization here in the city of Houston, predominantly working with youth as early as five. Um, Two adults uh, using um, arts education as a tool to engage and focus them academically, building a more holistic life for them and their families. So that's kind of it in a, in a mouthful. Um, but we also act as a presenter through Texas Commission on the Arts, uh, National Endowment for the Arts, um, NPN, all sorts of venues like that to present uh, emerging and established artists here uh, throughout the city at two locations, one in the East End at the TBH site and one at the Dow School in the historic Old Sixth Ward. All right, thank you. Thank you, Armando. You definitely have your talking points ready. <laughs> any, any other questions? <laughs> any other questions? Please feel free to ask. I, uh, I have a question. So um, the goal, I believe, is to, to engage and register 100,000. How is that being tracked? And I'm sorry if this has been already answered. How is that being tracked? You want us to track it? And also, is that being tracked through December as well? Um, so... Uh, I think the way you answer that, uh, ask the last portion of the question is something we need to figure out. Um, but I would say that from uh, from now to the end, of, um, from now to November third, like we do have a process through our data, um, through our, the different uh, vendors that we use in order to be able to get information about the community, and then uh, through our phone banking, text banking, and and anything that has to do direct contact with voters, uh, we know who uh, where unregistered voters are because that is public information, and then we would know who registered based on who co who connected with us through our process. Now, how that looks like for the arts, um, it's going to be a little different, right? Depending on the project, and we can. And probably we can track um, uh, depending on the art uh, and how um, the program or the project goes uh, and and the partners that you're working with, um, what part of the community, where are y'all focused on, who's participating. And through there, we can uh, track some data about what that looks like. Um, now, after November uh, 3rd, um, well, we will have to anticipate what comes out of the elections and how we're moving forward with that. Um, so I also want to say for Argus, this is an extraordinary opportunity because tracking and getting data on the impact of our work is often very difficult for us to do ourselves. And to have partners who already have systems and capacity to do that is really a, a really very special opportunity. Um, so no, you don't have to track it all by yourself. You will be working in partnership to do that. And uh, it's an amazing um, chance to actually turn the work that you do into real impact numbers, which are so hard to document. Yeah, and just to add one last thing, um, that's why we really want you to collaborate with um, the organizers, because this is a way where they will organize and they will do the tracking of the data and you do your art, your art and you do the best as you can. And through that collaboration, we can fulfill both needs. Any other questions? Okay. okay, hi, how are you doing? I have two questions mm -hmm. that are kind of in one. The first one is the samples. When you say the samples, is it artwork? Are we drawing art that is for this project or you're just looking at our past work? Because I was confused on that. Yeah, your past work, um, you past know, because yeah, the proposal is um, you, you give us the concept and what you want to do. We understand that you haven't made the work yet. And the grant is supposed to support you in making that new work. 
Um, so what we want to see, though, is what is the kind of work you do? What's your aesthetic? What forms do you work in? Just get a sense of you as an artist. It's just another way of introducing yourself to us as an artist. All right. Secondly, um, there, there's performing arts, there's the visual arts, and there's other um, types of art. So let's say my friend is a musician. I'm an, I'm, I'm an artist. Do we apply separately together? That's well, if you're collaborating, you should apply for one project. So you okay. shouldn't, um, I'm glad you asked that question. Don't have multiple people apply for the same project. If it's a collaboration, propose it together. Okay. Thank you so much for the question. Uh, is there any other last questions, thoughts? So uh, I want to appreciate everyone's time. Thank you for being here. Um, sorry, yeah. sorry. One more. Yeah, go ahead. One more. Um, so the other lady said she would help apply for someone in Iraq. Right? Uh, what did she say? I wasn't sure where he was from. So that person is not American, right? So can they still be part? I just want to clarify what that meant and if you can break it down for me to understand. So they don't have to be American. What, what is the, what is that about? Like explain it to me, sorry. I can answer that question. Yes, please. Thank you. Um, the person I was referring to an artist. Yeah. An Iraqi, it doesn't mean that he's not an American. He came okay. to the country as a refugee. He's a, a, he's a legal person. So, Yes, he has the right to apply like any other American because he has the um, documentation to prove it so. So I myself came as a refugee who became here, uh, who became a citizen of USA. And I've been working with um, thousands of refugees from all over the world. Refugees have a status like any other person. As we come in first, we are eligible for green card after one year. After five years, we became uh, we are eligible to become citizens of USA. Yes, we do have all um, the documentation to prove as well as that. Thank you. Azeb, thank you thank so you. much for answering that question. And let me just say, you will, um, you know, it is a grant, so you will have to uh, fill out a contract and a W-9 form and, you know, have the documentation of um, us being able to pay you, basically. Thank you. Are there anyone, does anyone else who hasn't spoken yet have a question? Okay. And well, there, this, yeah. Yeah, there's two in the chat. Um, one of them was around, um, uh, uh, um, sorry, around DACA, uh, if that was an issue. Um, so the, I don't think that there should be anything that would bar people. I, the, there will be like a process in terms of how to get the grant. And I know that there might be questions around taxes. That's something you need to consider around the W-9. Uh, but outside of that, um, I don't think that that, uh, that would matter um, at all. Um, but there was another question if the project also has to be finalized before voting day. Um, so November 3rd. Yeah, I would love to talk about that for a minute. So remember, you are your goal is to mobilize people to register to vote and or to actually vote. Um, in some cases, your project might, you know, have, it might be one work of art and your timeline might say when you're gonna complete a draft, when you're gonna get feedback from community partners, when you're gonna finalize the draft and when you're gonna, um, you know, uh, disseminate it. Other projects might have a completely different structure it might be a process of creating work or something that's iterative or has many, um, uh, you know, that keeps getting created all the way up to November. Like, you know, I keep um, saying this kind of as a joke, but it's it actually could really work. Like if somebody did a TikTok project, like they might be generating TikTok videos from September 1st until November 3rd every single day. So every project is going to look different. Um, and we really want you to design it and tell us what your ideal vision is. I see Armando has his hand up. If you wanted to Actually, you know, I'm, I'm glad that you brought up TikTok because I love it. And I, 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 for some reason, it hadn't come to mind. But that's actually having worked through the census project with Houston in Action 
and how that was so uh, constant work and constant messaging. That's actually how I pictured this project already anyway, right? So uh, something like at least, if not a daily push, a weekly push somehow. And uh, video was a discussion. So thank you for the TikTok because I love it and I'm, I'm on it. Duh, duh, duh. Yeah. Again, I'm not trying to influence anyone's uh, proposal either, but I'm just giving by way of example, a mural is very different from a social media project. That's all I'm trying to say. But uh, thanks, Armando. Is anybody else who hasn't spoken yet um, in our last two minutes want to ask a question? Hey, this is uh, Kevin Anderson. Uh, real quick, I, um, uh, and thank you for reading my question earlier. I feel like you answered it um, and a little while ago, what I was asking was um, in our writing, um, can we write uh, with the anticipation of the partner? Meaning like, say you mentioned Miro earlier. So say your, your goal is to put up 20 murals throughout the city, but you need help with some of those partnerships. So could the proposal be written in anticipation of the relationships that could happen? Yeah, absolutely. So you might not know your exact partner, but you know how you work with partners. You know how you work with community. So in that case, you'd want to tell us about your process. Um, yeah, definitely. Um, also in the chat, someone said, can we submit work in progress or rough drafts? You absolutely can. Um, just know that we might want, if you submit um, a rough draft or a work in progress, we'd also love to see a finished work. Uh, or something that really can help us envision um, what you would ultimately want it to be. Yes, and thank you all for your time for coming in today. Um, we're really excited to support all the beautiful artwork and connections that you have in it. And I do want to just emphasize, because like, I know that like, it was the question about even like status and immigrants, like the, this art project is intended for communities of color, immigrants, for uh, people who have been marginalized, people who probably would not have had an opportunity to get this. So uh, this is those designed and developed for, uh, for y'all in mind. Um, so please keep that uh, uh, in, in mind as uh, we're working through this. Um, and I want to say also that um, as we move forward, um, uh, we're still accepting proposals. So by all means, share if you know somebody out there who might be a good fit. Uh, keep passing along. I know that the deadline's pretty short, but we have gotten some some submissions. So I do appreciate those who are able to send them in already. So it can be done, um, and we're here to help. If you need to reach out to uh, me or Andrea, I know that you can uh, reach us out at houstonaction.org, uh, um, or Andrea, you could reach her Andrea and Art to Action. So, um. I got to say this one last thing. Um, we, we, I know, because I do this myself, that some artists are working on that proposal up to the very last minute on Sunday night after 11 p.m. Please do not contact me. I'm not going to be checking my email over the weekend. If you have questions, please try to look through the application. And you can, uh, I want to make sure you know, you can download the full application in a Word doc format so that you can read everything uh, in advance. Please try to look at it before Friday so that if you do have more questions, you can contact us before Friday and we can get back to you within the work week and uh, over the weekend. You're on your own, bless you. And we look forward to reading your proposals. And so thank you again for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate the time that we're able to do here. Um, uh, uh, this will, this has been recorded today and it will be shared out um, uh, on our YouTube channel at Houston in Action. So uh, feel free to look at all that, look for it there. And, uh, have a happy Tuesday. I hope to, um, to catch y'all pretty soon. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Uh, thank you.